All right, so my name is Sean Cusack, and uh, I went to Cooper Union here. I graduated in 1998. Uh, I've been teaching here part-time for about 10 years, in addition to my full-time job, because I just love this place to bits, so <laughs> I've wanted to be involved with it forever. And uh, now I'm on the alumni council, too. So I have like three jobs at Cooper in addition to everything else that I do. So go figure. So I put together uh, Cooper A Retrospective. Uh, which I've been kind of rethinking about maybe uh, calling it Creating the Creators. Uh, because part of Peter Cooper, our founder's uh, world, was that he was a very creative individual, but he wanted to empower other people to be creative. And that's why he made this school, and even today, the, uh, the three schools that are here, the art, architecture, and engineering, it's all about being creative. It's making something in the world bringing something into existence that didn't before. So, our founder, Peter Cooper, with uh, his iconic octagonal glasses and big fuzzy beard, his picture is all over the place, born in 1791 in New York City, <coughs> native New Yorker, uh, son of uh, very, fairly poor parents, he was an apprentice, a cabinet maker, and brewer, and did a whole bunch of these kind of random things as a child. Uh, but already he started affecting the world in some way. So, anyone ever used one of these things before? Raise your hand if you use a... Okay, yeah, we've had a few people use this before. Uh, he invented it when he was 13 in 1804. It was a hand crank version of washing machine. Now, other people were kind of making these things at the same time, so no one person really gets the stamp of approval that you know, made the washing machine. But he definitely created it himself, uh, and it, it took off from there. How about trains? Anyone ever taken a train before? <laughs> yeah, okay. Does anyone know uh, the name Tom Thumb? It's in a lot of uh, you know, stories and songs and stuff. Well, that was Peter Cooper's. When uh, I mean, he grew up and uh, started uh, producing steel, because this was in the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, he eventually became a robber baron of the likes of Carnegie and Rockefeller and such, and the first American-built steam locomotive on a common carrier railroad was Peter Cooper. It was uh, the Tom Thumb in 1830. So, how about Jell-O? <laughs> Who likes Jell-O? Anyone like Jell-O? No, boo! No. Getting some boo? How about Bill Cosby? Everyone wants to Bill Cosby. All right, excellent. Guess who invented Jell-O? <laughs> Peter Cooper. He, uh, had, he had basically been running a glue factory and had invented a way of powderizing uh, animal products. Oh. And that's how gelatin was invented. It came out of, it's a byproduct of glue. That's where it came from. But it, it's healthful, and it's only 10 cents, and it's grandma's favorite. So that, that, that'll have to do. And it represents honesty and purity. And it represents purity. It's the purest, you know, horse horse you'll get anywhere. All right, how about ever been in a skyscraper before? Anybody? Okay, especially this one. This one has a particular reason for it. And uh, have people seen, like, railroad tracks kind of out on the side, not just on the railroad, but you kind of notice the cross section where it's cut in half, you see the blue there, where it looks kind of like an eye. Well, notice that it kind of looks like this. Well, that's where Peter Cooper got the idea for inventing the eye beam. And if you go to the foundation building of Cooper Union across the street, it's one of the first steel uh, structures built in the world, and it's made with railroad tracks, not I-beams. Mm -hmm. And that's where he got the idea for it. So every steel structure in the world is attached to Peter Cooper for coming up with the I-beam. Mm -hmm. uh, now, some might say the, the greatest invention of his was Cooper Union, because he wanted to not just make things for himself, but help other people make things. So he wanted to make a place where it could be a complete meritocracy, Anybody, regardless of their income, could come in and learn and be, be part of things. Uh, it was initially a night school, so people could come in and, and learn, even though they had careers and such. And uh, we are about here. So the foundation building is here, and the, the building across the street, which has been replaced several times, is, uh, is where we are right now. Although the elevated line is not running across Third Avenue anymore. So, you know, that's something new. 
However, and here's a really interesting one, Peter Cooper invented elevator shafts before elevators. He figured someone would figure out how to do it, so he put an elevator shaft in the foundation building. Fifteen years later, someone invented the elevator, and it was eventually retrofitted. Although he figured, being an engineer, that elevators would be cylindrical, because that would be the best use of space. Oops. <laughs> so, they had to retrofit that, but when they redid the building, uh, they actually made a custom elevator. So if you go across the street and go uh, into a tour, there is a cylindrical elevator in there. It's one of the few in, in the world. So, who likes civil rights? <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter Cooper did it before it was cool. Not only was the school the first one in the country where women were treated as intellectual equals to men, but uh, he was an abolitionist before it really took off. And uh, one of the most important speakers in 1860 was Abraham Lincoln. We still have his podium in the Great Hall. People can speak touching the same podium that Abraham Lincoln did. He gave his now called P uh, P Cooper Union speech, which uh, got him the Republican nomination and you know, launched him into the presidency. And he had, I don't know, a couple of other famous people over the years. So here's Susan B. Anthony and Mark Twain. And nearly every president since then uh, has, has spoken there. Uh, even President Obama spoke there a couple years ago. So, who uses the internet? <laughs> Anybody? The internet? No, Al Gore wasn't one of our alumni. Is that a phone jet? <laughs> <laughs> it was a kind of internet y picture, so yes, I think it is. Um, however, he was one of the people that uh, helped fund and push through the transatlantic cable. So, that's the the great grandpappy of the internet. Uh, here we see it literally stretched out, people looking as it like, goes out to the boat. So uh, if it weren't for him, it was in a lot of like, financial trouble, they, didn't, they didn't think they were going to be able to push it through, but Peter Cooper was, the, and I think Abram Hewitt, his uh, son-in-law, also uh, helped kind of shove that through and make it happen. He also invented the third party. So he ran for president in 1876 as the Greenback Party uh, nominee, and it was the first official third party in American history. So all of the you know, Green Party and independence of today can also thank Peter Cooper for inventing. Yes? That had to do with like issuing uh, currency through the Treasury rather than through banks. Right. It, yes, a, there's, a, there's a famous a uh, yeah, bank, of, uh, bank of Bread, Good for $3. There was the notes he was handing out uh, while he was running for president. Uh, there was the whole, you know, should we have a national bank? Uh, he was very pro-gold standard at the time. <laughs> and so there's a lot of politics going on with that. And uh, that's what he ran on. Hmm? Proto-libertarian. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well, he didn't get in, um, you know, but, oh, oh well. Sure. And uh, over the course of his uh, years, he also spent an awful lot of time at McSorley's Tavern, which is across the street, which everyone can go to maybe during dinner time. And there's a chair hanging up over the bar. If you go there, and it's still there, that's the chair that Peter Cooper sat in every time he went to the bar. So he had a specific chair. No one else was allowed to sit in it. It was just Peter Cooper. And if you look around McSorley's Tavern, you'll see pictures of Peter Cooper everywhere, drinking songs that he wrote. You know, uh, pictures of his inventions. There's, there's all kinds of stuff up there. Um, all right, so who uses the subway? The subway? All right, anybody? So his son-in-law, Abram Hewitt, who uh, married his daughter, um, was the mayor of the city of uh, New York and uh, was also a, uh, a, a co-designer of the subway system in New York City or and uh, was there as mayor during the process of like first starting to, uh, to put it together, and also of Cooper Hewitt Museum. So any Cooper Hewitt stuff you see in the city, that's Peter Cooper and Abram Hewitt. All right, light bulbs. Anybody use light bulbs ever? Okay. Well, Thomas Edison took courses here in 1870 at Cooper Union. How about these? Anyone that see a record player? Is that too old or a microphone? <laughs> We don't have one of them here, but uh, one of our alumni, Emil Berliner, 
Engineering 1900 invented the microphone and some several enhancements to the uh, the phonograph. Anyone remember these cartoons? Popeye and Betty Boop. Max Flesher invented the rotoscope in 1915. Art alumnus 1900 in Cooper Union. Anyone ever drive in the Major Deegan Expressway? <laughs> Well, Major Deegan was a Cooper <laughs> architect, 1900s. I can't find a picture of him, but as a major, he served under the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers <laughs> under George Gothels. Anyone know that name? Hmm. <laughs> More big names. Anyone know who uh, designed the, uh, the Golden Eagle uh, coins? Augustus St. Gaudin. So, Art 1866, another Cooper... Uh, graduate. Anyone uh, read Hagar in the comics? Dick Brown also went to Cooper <laughs> in the 1830s. I don't think he actually graduated, but he took courses here, in, uh, I believe, in the, in the night school. And uh, he and later his son continued the, uh, the thing. All right, no one has seen this before, <laughs> right? Never seen any like t-shirt with it. I mean, I, I have an iHeart Cooper, but it's not quite an iHeart New York. Well, that's uh, good old Uncle Milt, who's still around, and if you come to some big Cooper events, you can probably get a chance to meet him. But uh, Milton Glaser, Art 1951, made I Heart New York, uh, sketched it in the back of a taxi cab in New York City. Anyone ever drink Absolute Vodka? You've seen the iconic uh, advertisements? That's Arnie, Ar Arnie Arlo, Art 1954. Or how about the Fluxus? Uh, events which are coming out soon uh, in early next year. Well, that's uh, George McCunis, Art 1952. Or John Haydock, a very uh, important architect and uh, was the one that restored the foundation building, Art 1950. Eva Hess, what's Cooper Union, Art 1957. Sam Messer, Art 1977. He comes to a lot of uh, Cooper events. I met him last year. All right, anyone have a website? <laughs> Anyone ever use that? Well, this strange character who you probably never met before <laughs> <laughs> is a very important person uh, in the internet. Uh, not only is Paul Guerin a uh, influential artist in video media, but uh, he had a 1997 antitrust lawsuit against the government uh, that without it, the internet would be a very different place than it is uh, today. So just out of curiosity, does anyone own one of these? This is a, a rapid beverage chiller, and it's a, an invention that actually came out of Cooper Union. Uh, Greg Loibel, electrical engineer in 1992, actually worked for his company for about three months over a summer when I graduated out of Cooper just briefly. I was like his, his marketing manager. Uh, but that brings money into Cooper now. Like the patent is done through the, through the school, and it was a long-standing project. Many, many, many beers chilled in, you know, Cooper Union lab that had to be disposed afterwards. The fun way. And we come to uh, modern day, you can see both uh, Paul and I here, uh, as well as the uh, ex-dean of, uh, of engineering who uh, left recently, and some students. And uh, we are putting together kind of an extension of this. Uh, we want to extend the uh, entrepreneurship factor to students and alumni, but also to the community. I mean, people that come into Cooper and be part of creating things with us together. Uh, and there are a whole bunch of uh, Cooper Union-based startups. So I'm just going to go through a few briefly. Uh, one of Paul Guerin's startups is uh, Namespace. Uh, he owns a number of top-level domains like .art and .new York City. And uh, if you go to namespace.us slash Cooper Union and you register through him, then some money will go to the school, which is, which is good. Uh, another alumnus, Christine Moe, 1995, is putting together a... Uh, an automated uh, curation engine where you can uh, rent art online. And uh, the idea is to be able to like, take a picture of a space and it will recommend art that will fit that space for you digitally. So that's a uh, up and coming uh, startup. 
Me, uh, I, I run a startup called Learnosaurus.com, uh, educational video games for children. This is more like you know, reaching out and extending to, to other people. Uh, our valedictorian from last year, uh, Interdisciplinary Engineering uh, 2012. Do people know what a, uh, an insulin pump is? Mm -hmm. Well, instead of detecting your uh, blood chemistry and then giving you insulin, imagine if it could read your heartbeat and detect whether you're going to have a heart attack in the next 30 minutes, prevent it, and then send you to the hospital. Prototype already done, starting to market it. CardioGuard, that's coming out at Cooper Union. Or Edison Lang, another uh, graduate from uh, last year. He, he and a friend of his from, uh, I think, NYU, uh, starting a, uh, an online web company where you can track your sleep and it will like recommend uh, slip doctors and various other things, and you can keep track of things that way. And as a, uh, as a teacher here, I also am running a uh, app design uh, workshop class, and I have students that are working on all kinds of interesting things, a, uh, a game based on GPS tracking when you're running around Manhattan, whereas you like encircle buildings, you can claim them, and people can kind of fight for space. Uh, something will tell you when you're walking over an old subway you don't know exists anymore and give you some historical knowledge about that. Uh, bulletin board system for the school, personal pages for, for students, and so on. And we're trying to run as many of these like outreach programs. I ran something called an app camp over the summer. I had a, mostly students, but a few guests coming in, teaching them how to make their own companies, their own apps on the web, on iPhone, and so on. Uh, there's a continuing ed program here that does this kind of thing as well. And uh, basically, we just want to reach out to the community. Uh, we're already doing everything we can with alumni, students, and faculty. But if anyone else in the area wants to work with Cooper Union alumni, past or present, and put together some project together, start a business together, uh, Cooper Union uh, does some like sponsorship of patents in return for some profit sharing, uh, that kind of thing. Or if you want to set up a lecture series, something like this. Or if you want to hold an event here, or work on a workshop together. Or if you'd like to see Cooper Union alumni or faculty run a workshop for you, teach you something, run it here so that you can come and learn it, talk to us. This is what the institution is about, and this is uh, opening up the, the word for everybody. Also. Join us at Founders Day, or the biggest event of the year where we celebrate Peter Cooper and everybody connected to everything because of him, which is all of you due to everything that we've been talking about uh, for the past 15 minutes or so. And a lot of the famous alumni that are, are still around are often at uh, Founders Day. So you probably meet Sam Messer and uh, Milton Glaser and such at that. Uh, so if anyone's interested, contact either me, Cusack at Cooper, or uh, Madeline Kilroe, who works in the uh, like alumni events, or just type, or go to alumni at cooper.edu and, uh, and contact people. So that's it. Thank you and me and Cooper Union. <laughs>